The Eagles have arrived and we're about to give you a special viewing. We'll meet one of Whistler's talented athletes who will be representing Canada at the 2014 Paralympics in Sochi. Plus, what does it take to get a chairlift ready for your ride? We've got all that, plus new music and health tips. Stay with us. That's on this episode of Go See to Sky. Welcome to Go See to Sky. I'm your host, Heather Butts, enjoying some time today in Brackendale. Now, every winter from the end of November to the beginning of February, hundreds of bald eagles call this area home. Now, there's many places to view these spectacular birds, but in this episode of Go See to Sky, we'll be spending some time with the Eagle Watch volunteers right here along the Eagle Run Dyke. Let's have a look. Like a shining star amongst a dark night sky, perched in the trees of Brackendale Eagle Provincial Park, the white head of the bald eagle stands out against a grey winter backdrop. The Eagle Run Dyke opposite the park is the perfect place to view these magnificent creatures. Hi Meg. Hi Heather. Welcome Hi. to the Eagle Run Dyke. Thank you so much for meeting me here. This is Absolutely. just phenomenal. This Isn't it amazing? Toom is the program coordinator for Eagle Watch, a volunteer-based organization in Squamish working to educate the public about wintering bald eagles. Each year the birds of prey from Alaska, northern BC and the Yukon call this stretch of the Squamish River home from mid-November to the beginning of February. They're here for the salmon and they're also here because this is a protected area and they have access to the salmon. Uh, our rivers and, and lakes aren't frozen so there's lots of food for them. Plus we've got great cottonwood and maple trees which allow them to, to perch and also to roost. Watching from across the river, the experience is breathtaking. A dreary, wet winter day doesn't bother these impressive beasts. So I too ignore the drizzling rain. With an Eagle Watch volunteer at my side, the experience is educational. It takes about five years for a bald eagle to get the white cap and the white tail and, and a yellow beak. Uh, the juveniles, you can see a few juveniles down there, there's three of them. So they're that mottled brown color. This year's high numbers of chum and coho salmon has resulted in a strong return of the wintering bald eagles. Volunteers noted 1,600 eagles in the greater Squamish area during the 2014 count, double the number from the year before. So Meg, you have telescopes for people, the public, who want to come and view these. Absolutely, so it's a great way for the public to view the eagles without actually disturbing them. With the use of a telescope, Eagle Watch volunteers guide me through an ethical viewing process, as they do with members of the public on Saturdays and Sundays during the winter months. Ethically viewing is essentially giving them the space they need. We offer telescopes here at the Eagle Run Dyke so you can get really close to them without disturbing them. Wow. This is just beautiful. I'm Swooping above the Squamish River, eagles weigh up to 13 pounds with a wingspan of nearly two meters. A remarkable sight, but it's crucial to keep your distance. It takes a lot of calories for an eagle to lift off. So if you've disturbed it from feeding, you've affected their feeding um, habits and that can impact them in future. Seeking shelter from the rain, my tour continues with a glance at some of the many interpretive posters located within the timber frame structure on the dike. So if people want to come up with their binoculars and their cameras, they can also learn a little bit while they're here. In its 19th year, Eagle Watch has more than 60 volunteers who brave the elements every weekend while the eagles are here to help keep them safe while informing the public. We're very fortunate in Squamish to have this phenomena happen every year. And so we want to connect people to nature. We want to establish respect for these animals. We want to teach people how to view them in an ethical manner. Viewing from across the river, it's the perfect vantage point to capture the big picture of this unique event.
If you think the bald eagles look spectacular in our story, you've got to come here and check them out in person. Eagle Watch volunteers set up here at the dike every Saturday and Sunday from 9.30 to 3.30. Now it is available to everyone, but they do ask for a small donation. Well, as we are in the middle of January, the Winter Olympics are just around the corner, and that means so are the Paralympic Games. And this year, Whistler has a spectacular athlete competing at the 2014 Paralympics He'll be representing our country in snowboarding. Meet Tyler Mosher. Standing to wax his snowboard, Tyler Mosher has overcome the unimaginable. I was never supposed to walk again. On December 30, 2000, Mosher broke his back while snowboarding after falling 10 meters and landing on the top of his head. My back exploded at one vertebrae, totally exploded like a grenade going off in your body. It ended up being an incomplete injury and uh, you know, I got back the muscles that enabled me to walk, although I'm still medically 40% paralyzed below the waist. Preparing his board to head up on the mountain for training, this world champion adaptive snowboarder will represent Canada during the 2014 Paralympics, the first time the adaptive sport will be included in the Games. I was in the legislature with Rick Hansen uh, May 2nd, 2012, when the announcement came out, and I was elated uh, that snowboarding got named to the 2014 program. Um, and in many ways, I won my gold medal on that day. Stacking his bones as though he's walking on stilts, Mosher heads down the 100 steps from his house. Just getting to the mountain is a feat in itself, but one that he's proud to say he's able to do. It's a tough go because realistically, everyone's telling you that you're going to need to be in a wheelchair. And um, it's, it's upsetting, but you don't... You don't dwell on what you don't have, you get through by looking at what you do have. This won't be his first Paralympic Games. Mosher's cross-country rehabilitation led him to compete for Canada on home turf in 2010. The goal then was not to win a medal, but gain experience as a Paralympic athlete that would help him put snowboarding in the forefront of adaptive sports. I was constantly pursuing uh, the development of racing for the disabled in snowboarding so that it would be funded at the grassroots level so that children living with a disability who wanted to snowboard with their friends would have the opportunity to snowboard. Thirteen years after his accident, Mosher is going for the real gold. Constantly working on his technique, snowboarding isn't as easy as it once was. He must be focused, completely in tune with his mind, body and board, telling his muscles exactly what to do. He must train hard so that when race day comes, Mosher can simply look through his lens and go as fast as he can. I'm going there as a frontiers person and a pioneer for adaptive snowboarding. I'm going there to represent my country, but I'm not going there as a tourist. I'm going there to win. The Paralympic Games run from the 7th to the 16th of March, so be sure to cheer for Tyler. Now, if you miss one of our episodes or want to see one of our full shows, they're available for you online in HD. Just visit youtube.com slash Whistler Shaw. Go see the sky, we're your local voice. Coming up. Dark circles and puffy eyes. Somebody told me to put cucumbers on them. But do you think that really works? Rumor or remedy, the truth behind a healing vegetable. The following are proud supporters of community programming on Shaw TV. Hairstyling and color services for Heather Butts are provided by The Loft Salon. TheLoftSalon.com Levitt Machinery services all the brands they sell, anywhere in Western Canada. If you have big machines for moving stuff and they have a problem, Levitt can fix it. Need a lift? Stack it, reach it, lift it. Levitt. One in three Canadians know someone with Alzheimer's disease or another dementia. I'm one of those Canadians. September is World Alzheimer's Month and the Alzheimer's Society of BC wants you to get involved. 
Use your creative ideas, your outstanding talents, and your sizzling passions. We make it easy to create a unique fundraising event or join in someone else's. Do anything for Alzheimer's and help support people with dementia, their caregivers, and research for a cure. Let's get started at anythingforalzheimers.ca today. Welcome to Go See the Sky. I'm your host, Heather Butts, enjoying some time viewing the beautiful bald eagles right here in Brackendale. Now, they are here for the winter months, as we showcased earlier on the show. And we've got a new segment for you today. Johanna Ward brings us health and wellness tips from Vancouver. Today, it's all about cucumbers. Do they really reduce circles under the eyes? Is it a rumor or a remedy? Have a look. Dark circles and puffy eyes. Somebody told me to put cucumbers on them. But do you think that really works? We posed the question on Facebook. Dark circles. What's the cause and what's the cure? Lots of opinions out there. A lot of people agree it's due to lack of sleep. Some people say it's allergies. Some people say it's genetics. And Rick says it's due to not having a great boyfriend. But I'm not sure that there's medical evidence on that. In all the sassy and serious answers, not one Facebook friend mentioned cucumbers. But lots mentioned concealer and the cause of genetics. So we hit Beauty Mark in Yale Town for advice from a pro on pretty. At least five or six people come in through the door a day. Dehydration, puffiness, dark circles, that's the main concern always. Being a pretty good sport about this, Joe. <laughs> but I did ask the cameraman to go easy on the close-ups as we're trying to get rid of these raccoon eyes, not promote them. Something called camouflage. <laughs> this isn't quite a concealer, yeah. but this is, a, yeah, it's this even is better. Called, this is a little bit thicker. It's a creamier base, and that's what you want to start with if you're really fighting dark, dark circles. Okay. Next, Gemma adds concealer. She likes one of Stila's new products that has both a brightener and corrector. The swirly cone in McDonald's? <laughs> pretty. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> and it all swirls out and it's different, so you can Ooh, see the brightener in it yeah. and the concealer. Another of her tricks is to set it with powder. To make sure that it doesn't crease. Seems like a lot of product, although it shouldn't look it. What is the rule about reapplying throughout the day. Honestly, if you have the time, remove it and start all over again. It's going to take you a minute to two minutes and you're not going to have that cakey look. I've camoed, I've corrected, set it with a little bit of powder. I want nice you to change my life. and bright. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yes, it is nice and bright, but it's a lot to go through every day. Imagine if there's another way around it. So it's back to the street to continue our search for answers. Dark circles. What's the cause and what's the cure? We're looking for old wives' tales that work. You put tea bags on your eyes. I don't have it because I sleep well. Anti-aging cream? Yeah, works for me. Yeah, and sleep more. I heard hemorrhoid cream works. <laughs> That's what models use. We heard that one on Facebook too. Sophia says she heard hemorrhoid creams help, but she hasn't tried it. And Phil agrees, although he didn't say whether he's tried it. Me? I'm up for trying almost anything. So next, we explore a science that dates back over 2,000 years. Acupuncture is based in traditional Chinese medicine. Meridian points along the body are linked to specific organs that are stimulated with needles. Thin, sharp needles. And is it going to hurt? No. We like to have a little bit of tingling sensation that just tells us that we've reached the qi energy of the body. For dark circles, if it's not hereditary, Suka says the first place to look is at a kidney liver imbalance. The liver, it expresses itself through the eyes. As we age, our kidney chi starts to decline. And with that, we experience things like out poachings and uh, darkness under the eyes. So when I get off the table, will I look 10 years younger? Well, what I can say is definitely you're going to actually feel a lot better. You'll probably feel more energized after the treatment. And once you go home, you'll probably go home and have a good rest. It just kind of all adds up to good health. Healthy options to explore and advice to integrate, whether you want a cure or a cover-up for dark circles. But what to do with the cuke that started this quest? Well, all's not lost. We can always use the cucumber in our salad. Well, it is raining here in Brackendale, but traditionally that means it's snowing on Whistler Blackcomb and the season is in full swing and I'm sure you're enjoying it. But do you ever wonder what it takes to get the mountain ready for you? Earlier this season, I tagged along with a lift mechanic to see what's involved to get those lifts ride ready. Take a look. Often 
been taken for granted, the chairlift is an important aspect of a mountain resort. As I ride up the Whistler gondola, I gaze out at the thousands of acres of skiable terrain, all accessible by a variety of lifts. I find myself wondering what it takes to get them ready for ski season. I decided to meet up with a lift mechanic to get all the answers. Hi, Craig. Hi, Heather. How are you? How are you? Good, good. So you're in charge of all the lift mechanics? I am looking at the Emerald Chair for preseason checks. So okay. come on in and we'll start out. Perfect. Wow, so what do we have here, Craig? So this is the control cabinet for the Emerald Chair. Basically all the electronic controls are within this cabinet. And what we're doing for preseason is we're just checking our stop buttons, mm -hmm. which are these here. And we're just making sure that there's no electrical faults and that the lift's gonna run fine. All green lights, it's ready to run. The electrical checklist complete, we head towards the mechanics of it all. So Craig, we're heading up into sort of the, the belly of the beast, I guess. This is the drive station for the Emerald Chair. So it has basically the electric motor, the gearbox, the mechanics of running the lift. Okay. Let's go up. Craig guides me to a sea of motors, brakes, and gearboxes, not often viewed by anyone other than a lift mechanic. Back here are the two uh, diesel engines. Okay. And Major lift maintenance is done during the summer months. The brakes are torn apart and every piece within this station gets a thorough checkup. The fine tuning is what happens just before the season sure begins. We make sure the tires are full of air, uh, the belts are tight, and the lift just runs like it should for a normal day of skiing. And of course, checking the lift includes riding the lift. That's right, and I think we should go for a ride around. Okay, sounds good. Okay, let's go. <laughs> the Emerald Lift has 145 chairs on it. Each lift tower, roller, and chair goes through a critical inspection in the off season, ensuring that not only the lift will run, but it's safe. We also do 25% of non-destructive testing on every lift. So 25% of the grips you see on the rope here mm -hmm are completely taken apart, they're tested, and new parts are added, they're put back together and put back on the carriers. Wow. Riding the lift is the most important part of the inspection, and it's done on a daily basis all winter long. A certified member of the lift operation team does a full ride around, called a line check, before guests are able to load the chair. Basically, I'm uh, watching the rope go over each tower, and I'm also listening for any irregular sounds that may come up, and we might have to go and look at that before we can let the lift open for public. All of Whistler Blackcomb's 37 lifts are checked daily, so guests need not worry. Here, you should simply relax and take in the striking views before you make your way down to enjoy them all over again. Well, thank you so much for joining us on this rainy episode of Go Sea to Sky. If you have a story idea for us or would like to comment on our show, please get in touch with us at facebook.com slash go sea to sky. Later in the show, you can uh, certainly do this cocktail at home. It's very easy to make. Fun and fruity. We add a fresh taste to your apre. The following are proud supporters of community programming on Shaw TV. Heather Butt's wardrobe is fitted by Peak Performance. Peakperformance.com Whether you're pursuing a television career or looking for a new leisure activity, we invite you to join the Shaw TV volunteer program. You can gain valuable hands-on experience and acquire skills ranging from camera to floor directing. We're looking for high school or college students or adults who are eager to learn. Shaw TV is currently accepting volunteer applications. Contact us today. We're there to bring it home. Shaw TV, your local voice. Retirement Concepts Weather Report on Shaw TV takes you from around the world to across the country to your own backyard. Retirement Concepts Weather Report on Shaw TV gives you the inside information on the outside world daily on Shaw TV.
Welcome back to Go See the Sky. I'm your host, Heather Butts, and we're in Brackendale today enjoying the beautiful sights of the wintering bald eagles. Now, we have a new episode for you today on the show. Reporter Paul McClellan introduces us to Giraffe Aftermath, a reggae band from Vancouver. Giraffe is a band that's taken a familiar style to a lot of people and really made it something that um, maybe a little more localized and relatable to people out here and kind of represents more what, you know, our lifestyles are about. Their West Coast Canadian take on reggae and hip-hop rhythms have built a following throughout BC, and now Giraffe Aftermath look to really establish themselves with the forthcoming second album. Well, Steve and I, the guitar player, uh, we've been playing together for a number of years and just started, you know, writing and playing. And then, uh, you know, we added a bunch of other members to fill out the sound, and there you have it. How did you first get involved in the band? Where did you come in to play with these guys? Well, me and Jocelyn, the horn section, go to Cap, and this big van rolls up there one day, <laughs> and we were just ordered to get into the back. And basically from then, we woke up at Luke's house and started playing, and two years later, we're still there and haven't found a way out. So, if anyone's listening, help us out. <laughs> So Sleepless Nights is the last record. What can you tell us about the record? What do people need to know going into that one? Uh, forget about that. We got a new one coming out. It's going to be better. <laughs> well, tell me about the new one then. What are you guys up to? Oh, uh, we're like two months in. Uh, I'm working on a new album. I'm trying to showcase like the sound that we're that we're playing live now. Where Sleepless Nights is kind of. I mean, it was our first go at. We like engineer everything ourselves, so it was kind of our first go at that. And uh, I don't know. This next one's just going to be better. It sounds great so far. <laughs> Where are you right now in the process with finishing that? When should we expect that one? Oh, uh, it's probably going to be like before Christmas for sure, but you know, hopefully it's like sometime this fall. You'll really hear how new members of the group and just the whole dynamic has changed. I think it's going to be great. I think if you come to our live show, um, that'll be probably a cl close, close to what the album is going to sound like. You can catch more video of them online at youtube.com slash giraffe aftermath at Soundhouse Studios. Well, what comes to mind when you're listening to that type of music? Maybe a little dancing or a get together with friends. I've got the perfect thing to go with it. How about a fun fruity cocktail? Now it may be winter, but that doesn't mean you can't add a little spice to your apre. Okay, Tia, it's a new year, 2014. Maybe time to spice uh, things up a little bit. Freshen up your bar list, have a new drink for your guests when they're coming over to your house. So what are you teaching us to make here today? So uh, it's the start of the new year. We want to uh, start uh, opening our palette. We're done with the Christmas uh, spice of all of our cocktail programs. We're gonna use a product that we have locally, and that would be Ashram Gin. Great local product, distilled in Pemberton at the Pemberton Distillery. Exactly. They're very fun uh, place to visit. Very much so. So uh, you can uh, certainly do this cocktail at home. It's very easy to make. So that's just uh, one and a half ounces of Ashram Gin. And then we're gonna use a product here. It's really zesty, really fresh. It's uh, Ginger of the Indies, made by Jafad. And we're gonna use an ounce of that liqueur in our cocktail. And that's just adds a little sweet? Adds a little sweet, adds a little spice. Uh, super, super tasty product. Goes really well with gin. And then I'm just gonna add three ounces of pineapple juice. Pineapple juice. I know, very right? fruity, very fresh. Absolutely. Okay. 
some ice. Ice and shaken, not stirred. You got it. All right. Shake it up there. Shake there. <laughs> Professional shake. Do you yeah. have to do that over the shoulder when you're doing it at Absolutely. home? Absolutely. All right, it's make all it, about the shake, guys. Make it look classy. Perfect. So we're just gonna give that a little strain. Uh, in the ice with a fresh herb as well. Yeah, so we're just gonna use a little bit of rosemary, which you'll find is actually a botanical in the gin itself. And we're gonna top it up with a little bit of soda water just to make it nice and effervescent. And there you have a super refreshing, uh, super herbaceous and botanical cocktail that's gonna awaken your palate and is also gonna be a super refreshing beverage to drink. All right, let's see how refreshing it is. I'm gonna mm. give this a try. It looks beautiful, yeah. nice and refreshing. What do you think? Delicious. Yeah. Very fruity, very fresh. Awesome. And the rosemary really adds a nice little unique flavor mm. to uh, a drink. Absolutely. Thanks. Well, that does it for this episode of Go See to Sky. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.